Good afternoon, my name is Caroline Goedmakers and I am a PhD research fellow within the Computational Neuroscience Outcome Center in Boston. Today I would like to share with you our most recent work on using deep learning to predict ASD based on preoperative cervical MRIs in patients undergoing single level ACDF. Before we start, I would like to thank all my collaborators at CNOC as listed here, especially Akang Sharana, Alessandro Bawaro, and Hassan Zaidi, um, as well as Asad Luck. Also, we'd like to thank the organizing committee for offering us the opportunity to present our work here today. Adjacent segment disease in our study has been defined as the onset of new clinical symptoms that correspond to degenerative radiographic changes on the adjacent level to a previous spinal fusion. Um, these radiographic changes can be disc protrusion or osteophyte formation, um, among others. In literature, the percentage of patients that has to be surgically treated for ASD after an initial single level ACDF ranges from 6% up to around 50%, but in reality, a more conservative measure, um, estimate is probably most accurate, around 15%. Currently, we have no method available to accurately predict ASD preoperatively, except from best clinical judgment combined of a neuroradiologist um, and or a neurosurgeon. In our study, we retrospectively collected data from the MGB patient data repository, and after in and exclusion criteria were applied, 344 patients could be included into the study. To train the models, the data set was split into 208 training images, 43 validation images, and 93 test images with no absolute overlap. Three different models were trained to compare intermodal performance. Um, the three best slices from each T2 sagittal MRI volume were selected as input, making this not a fully 3D but more a 2.5D project. And they were fed into the model in the dimensions of 512 by 512 times 3. The proposed models have been trained from scratch using various data augmentation techniques, including clipping cropping and also scaling. And the ResNet 50 model specifically consists of 48 convolutional layers, one max pool and one average pool layer. We also added a clinical comparison of both a neurosurgeon and a neuroradiologist that were presented with the same baseline information as the algorithm and that used the Matsumoto grading scale to judge whether they found it likely that this patient would have to undergo additional surgery after this initial uh, procedure. And in case the neuroradiologist and neurosurgeon um, did not agree on a certain prediction, the neuroradiologist prediction was deemed uh, superior. The ROC curve shows performance with AUC per model. Uh, with the ResNet 50 showing the highest performance, an area under the curve of 0.89, an accuracy of 95%, sensitivity of 80%, and a specificity of 97%. The performance of the clinicians is indicated with a single black dot, uh, with a true positive rate of 0.60 and a false positive rate of 0.42, accuracy of 58%, sensitivity of 60%, and a specificity of 58%. Um, as their outcome was binary and not probabilistic, like the model, no ROC curve could be generated for the clinical comparison. On this slide, you can see the confusion matrices for the model in blue and the clinicians in orange with corresponding outcome metrics. Um, outcome metrics and performance are reported in absolute number of patients. Comparing the automated model prediction of the ResNet 50 to the ground truth in blue, and comparing the clinical prediction to the ground truth of the test set in orange. On this slide on the right, you can see grad cam saliency maps. They illustrate in which region um, of the cervical MRI uh, was positively correlated with um, the output of the network. Grad cam based saliency maps are provided for two cervical MRIs upon which was accurately predicted by the algorithm that patients would develop ASD, um, that are A and B, the upper two, and four cervical MRIs based upon which was accurately predicted by the algorithm that patients would not develop ASD, 
Those are the four lower ones, C, D, E, and F. The color bar indicates the importance of zones on the image for the network in making a prediction. So high focus colored zones uh, were considered most important by the network, whereas low focus zones are of lesser importance to the network, its decision making for predicting um, of patients uh, developing uh, symptoms. And it seemed that the compression of neural structures appeared to be the main risk factor uh, for the deep learning algorithm. Of course, this study has limitations too, um, with the main consideration being the duration of follow-up. Uh, the, the length of follow-up varied widely between 12 months and 38 months and had an average of 19 months. Um, for ASD developed, this is crucial. Um, in defining the ground truth, we decided to look at the last available radiological and clinical follow-up, but longer duration follow-up in some patients uh, may have revealed ASD where it didn't right now. Other discussion points are that results were only based on MRI, not accounting for uh, clinical and demographic characteristics, that surgical outcomes will additionally vary by technique and surgical um, expertise, and that there was some imbalance in the ASD versus no ASD distribution in our data set. Lastly, there's an ongoing debate on uh, the efficacy and trustworthiness of GRADCAM saliency maps. Um, therefore, the results of these maps should be interpreted with caution. Uh, for future projects, um, our group thinks it's important to focus on predicting ASD for multi-level ACDF patients instead of just like single uh, level patients as in our study. Uh, also using x-rays instead of MRIs or combining both modalities and using time-related clustering to incorporate the follow-up timing component. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank um, the organization again and all my collaborators and I'll take any questions uh, in the live discussion chat. Thank you.